Today's story is one I've been hearing referenced a lot recently. As with most things on this channel, it's something that I've previously gone down a rabbit hole of researching. For anyone who's heard the story before, it's certainly something that may have stuck with you. If you've never heard it before in your life, well, it's one you definitely should hear. So, here we go. Pregnancy is at its core such a beautiful thing, I'm told. This is a process where a female can literally grow a living being inside of them. It's a magical process if you put aside all of the pain and stresses of morning sickness, big fat cankles, not being allowed to booze for nine months and permanently stretched out parts. Yep, it's a beautiful thing. However, one of the most stressful parts of pregnancy is trusting your chosen physician with keeping your baby fit and healthy while it bakes in the oven. Often, we as non-medically trained professionals never question what drugs and processes the doctors perform. After all, they're highly educated and save lives every single day. It's natural we would trust them to care for us and our baby. This was exactly the case back in the 1950s and 1960s. Women put full trust in their doctors to do the right thing by their baby and horrifically, thanks to a drug called thalidomide, their babies would be permanently affected by the decision. This would lead to one of the biggest medical scandals in living memory and a large number of human beings having to live with severe physical abnormalities through no fault of their own. Firstly, I should explain what thalidomide is and what it was promised to be. Thalidomide is a drug that is commonly used even to this day as a means of treating certain cancers, skin conditions such as leprosy, and it has also been used in the treatment of HIV. However, this is only when the disease reaches a very serious stage, and its use was much more common in the 1980s than it is today. Common side effects of this drug would be lethargy, dizziness, and a possible skin rash, more serious side effects include tumor lysis syndrome, that's when a large number of cancer cells die within a short period, releasing the contents into the blood, peripheral neuropathy, that's when the nerves that carry messages to and from the brain, spinal cord to the rest of the body are damaged or diseased, and blood clots. Its usage as a treatment must be carefully measured so that the positive effects outweigh the risks. In the 1950s and 1960s, this drug had been developed to treat pregnant women and act as a means of keeping the baby healthy. It was primarily marketed as a drug that could reduce morning sickness, anxiety and insomnia in the mother. However, unbeknownst to those administering this new drug, the effects that it can have on a pregnant mother and child could be catastrophic. If this drug is taken within the early stages of pregnancy, up to 42 days, it could cause serious life-altering deformities to the child. If taken in the first 20 days of pregnancy, the child would have severe brain damage. The 21st day would lead to severe eye damage. The 22nd day would lead to deformations of the face and ears. And from any time from day 24 to day 42, this drug would lead to severe limb deformations of the arms and legs. The medical term for such a condition is known as phocomelia. This drug's invention was also a rather strange procedure as well. A company called Chimmy Grunenthal created this drug back in 1957 and aggressively marketed it as a miraculous cure for morning sickness. So, without so much as testing the effects of thalidomide on any pregnant women, this product began being rolled out across medical practices from 1958 to 1961. It was given out as samples by GPs, recommended by pharmacists, and popped by expectant mothers as innocently as a gummy vitamin. This all seems like a freak accident and a negligent one at that. However, when you take into account that the production of this drug was led by Heinrich Muchter, a known Nazi war criminal, the plot begins to thicken. 
Many believe Mukhtar intentionally created and marketed the drug in the way he did as a means of continuing the freakish human experiments that he was able to perform during the Second World War. However, after the company agreed a settlement in the 1970s, it was confirmed that Mukhtar would not face any repercussions for his role in this medical disaster. If you're not familiar with what went on with those doctors, check out the video I previously made on this channel featuring that hellhole. During the period where thalidomide was an active drug within medical practices, it is estimated that over 10,000 pregnant women were affected by the disaster. It is of course difficult to quantify the exact number, but it is thought it's possible that up to 100,000 babies may have been affected. Of these 10,000, it's also estimated that over 40% of the babies born died during the pregnancy or shortly after. One of the saving graces of this whole ordeal was that the USA, a place with a huge population even back in the 1960s, had the foresight to turn down the opportunity to introduce thalidomide into their medical care practice. This was for the most part down to one individual, the strong will of Francis Kelsey, responsible for rejecting the proposal on several occasions, despite pressure from multiple pharmaceutical companies. This would lead to the FDA awards called the Francis Kelsey Award being given to those within the FDA for being the best staff member of the year. His decision was to prove the right one and saved countless lives. Regardless of the potential nefarious cause of the disaster, what can be said without doubt is that the safeguarding procedures in place were not meticulous enough. So the one positive that can be taken from this tragedy is that procedures were tightened within the 46 countries that incorporated this drug into their standard practices, with better drug regulation processes and much more rigorous vetting processes for new drugs. While thalidomide eventually did find its place within the world of medicine, we were able to see firsthand just how dangerous a drug can be if used incorrectly. What's most tragic of all and hurts my heart to think about was that this particular medical error harmed the most vulnerable among us. Several people who were affected by this drug went on to tell their personal stories from their unique perspectives. A lot of their interviews and whole documentaries are available right here on YouTube, and I encourage you to hear them for yourself. Until we speak again, sending you good vibes. Stay safe out there.